In this video, I'm going to show you how I take this very nice but inexpensive plastic dolphin for a keychain and turn it into a beautiful solid sterling silver pendant. I have an old 925 sterling silver 2 ounce bar that you can see right here and some scrap silver that I'll also be melting. The first step is to create the mold. Take the cast iron mold, take one half, place the wide flange against the flat surface and now I'm going to take some casting sand and place a nice uniform layer in the bottom and then using a wooden dowel, I'm going to pack the casting sand into the mold. I want to use a lot of pressure, make sure the sand is really packed down tight. And now the last layer. And now I'm going to smooth it out by rolling the dowel over the surface. And you can see how nice and flat the surface looks. When we flip it over, you can see the side is perfectly smooth where I'm going to be performing the cast. Remove the excess from the opening. Next I need to take the dolphin and have it only partially into that surface. I need to have about half of the dolphin in and the other half sticking out. So I'm going to remove some of that casting sand just enough to get the proper depth of the dolphin. And I'm going to sprinkle the casting sand back into that cavity. Spread it out, make it nice and uniform. I don't want to have any voids when I press the dolphin into the surface. Take the dolphin, and now I'm going to position it correctly. Push down very hard. And you can see the fin is just over the surface. I'm going to pack the sand all around the dolphin and make sure the dolphin is really tight into that mold. Making sure every little area has the proper amount of sand. It doesn't have to be exact because the next layer of sand from the other side of the mold will fill in any voids. Here you can see I took some cornstarch, applied it to the surface. The purpose of doing that is to leave a film behind so when the other side of the mold is placed on top with more casting sand, the casting sand will not stick to things. It will allow the mold to separate easily. And repeat the process. Apply a layer of casting sand. The initial layer I'm going to do by hand. And I'm going to pack very gently around the dolphin. And as more and more casting sand is applied, I can pack it down harder. Here you can see everything's finished. I'm going to separate both halves. Very gently pull straight up and you can see how nice the dolphin still looks on the original side. And right here's what it looks like on the side we packed on top. Both sides looking pretty good. The next step is to clear an opening to allow the molten metal to flow into the dolphin. I'm going to use the surgical tool and just clear away an area about a quarter of an inch wide right up against the ring and right against the top of the dolphin's head. I'm going to take the plastic dolphin, insert it into the other side, and repeating the same process. I want to make sure there's an adequate opening for the molten metal to flow in. Both halves are now complete. Put them together very carefully. Wrap it together with a rubber band to keep it from pulling apart. If you look inside the mold at the upper part, you can see there's about a quarter of an inch opening where the metal will flow in. In the past, I've showed you an induction furnace. I showed you my dental burnout furnace. But for this video, we're going to be using this electric furnace that has the ability to melt silver, gold, copper, aluminum, and various other metals. You can see the graphite crucible is large. And at the very bottom, I have my silver bar, pieces of silver that are 100% along with some 925 silver rings. To ensure better flowability of the liquid metal, I added just a little bit of borax. Turn on the unit, and you can see the very top shows the maximum temperature setting of 1150 Celsius. Current temperature is 73. At the bottom, it's showing a setting of 1050. You can change the temperature setting using the buttons below the display. You can see the metal inside, and now it's melted. I'm going to take it out very carefully and I'm going to pour it into the mold fairly quickly. I don't want it to solidify. 
keep that flow going there we go and it's looking pretty good I'm gonna let that mold sit for a few minutes and open it up pop off the rubber band carefully separate the two halves and the mold looks pretty good the next step I'm going to take my Dremel with a cutoff wheel and remove the excess silver from the dolphin and other areas along the top and bottom. The Dremel can also be used with the cutoff wheel to smooth out the ridges. Once that's done, I usually use needle files. It allows me to get the contour really, really good. Here I'm taking the file clearing the mouth of the dolphin, making sure the line is nice and straight. Here's what it looks like with all the excess metal removed. Still a lot more finish work to be done. 220 abrasive paper works very well, smoothing out edges. Drill out the hole. And now take a rat tail file and very carefully round off the edges of the hull. Triple O steel wool to smooth things out. It's going to make the end result much better when I go to polish. The first step to polish is the rotary tool with a cloth wheel on low speed. And I'm going to be using the polishing compound that you see right here. I'm going to go over the entire dolphin two times to ensure that the polishing has been done really well. Now the finishing step is this really great metal polish made by Blue Magic. I applied some to the piece already and now I'm just buffing it clean so I can show you the end result. And guys, here it is. Look at that. If the polishing process was repeated one more time, I can probably eliminate the great majority of any little imperfections on the dolphin. You can see those little areas of facets and the weight is 1.867 troy ounces. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.